Hey, we're just back from Yellowstone and I've got a beautiful painting planned for you today. It happens to be a scene that we saw while we were out in the Yellowstone area. Before I get started, I want to tell you a little bit about it. It's called Bridal Falls. It's in a little town called Silvergate, Montana, which is just outside the Northeast Gate. Not many folks know about it except the locals. We had the opportunity to spend the afternoon at Bridal Falls and part of the evening filming. And I'm going to do that painting for you today. Before I get started though, I want to tell you a little bit about what I do to gather the reference material in the field. I brought with me some charts that I'll just take a moment and show you. I've got two with me, so let me start with this one. I've got a scene where basically I have a photograph of a lake area that we visited. From there, I do a composition sketch, a small thumbnail sketch to get the composition that I like, that I feel is pleasing. From there, I do what's called a value study to get my light, medium, and dark tones as to where I want those lights, medium, and darks in my painting. And then I do a value or a, uh, a color study. I pick several exciting colors that I like that I want to use in a particular finished painting. So that's what this represents. I've got one more chart that I want to show you, and it's a similar chart. In this case, it happens to be the lower falls at Yellowstone. And the same idea, I've got a thumbnail sketch where I've done a, a composition of the particular scene and I didn't have to change the composition that much. It was pretty good in the photograph. Doesn't always happen that way though. Then I did a value study again using my cobalt blue in this case. Then I did my color study. So that's how I began gathering my reference material for my final paintings. Let me go ahead and get started on this particular painting for you now. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to mix up some cobalt blue and I'm going to start with the sky area up here. Then from there I'll start laying in color and I'll start doing basically what I call an underpainting. Stay with me, you'll see exactly what I mean. In this case I'm going to pick up a three quarter inch flat brush, one of my new brushes, and I'm going to start with the sky. Now I'm going to keep the sky nice and loose. I'm going to have a cloud area and some blue sky behind the cloud, so watch what I do. I'm going to come in and I'm simply going to lay in some color like so and then what I'll do is I'll take a little spray bottle that has just water in it and a tissue and what I'm going to do is I'm going to just put the spray bottle right at the edge of where the sky and the cloud is and I'm going to just soften that area just a little bit. The reason I do that is I want to show basically a combination of hard edges and soft edges in the clouds. I want a variety of edge. So that's why I'm doing it that way. Let me continue on. I'll take a little bit more cobalt blue and then what I'll do is I'll clean out my brush and I'll come over and I'll pick up a little bit of maybe cerulean blue which is a little lighter blue. The reason I do that is I want a little variety of color as well. We talked about a variety of edge now we'll talk about a variety of colors. So I'm changing the color to a lighter blue. Again, I want to come in and make sure I soften part of the edge of the cloud just to add a little entertainment value. So I'll take a tissue again and just soften gently. So now I've got hard edges and soft edges going on. Let me go ahead and continue on. I'll take a little more of the cerulean. Continue just a little bit more along that area. And then what we'll do is I'll change color again. This time I'm going to go to a darker blue. I'll pick up a little bit of ultramarine blue deep, which is a little darker than both of these blues, and I'll add a little bit of that to it. So what I'm doing is I'm having a variety of color in the sky and a variety of edge. So I'm coming in and softening just a little bit more, softening a little bit more here and there, keeping it so it's entertaining rather than just all hard edge or all soft edge. Let me continue on. I'll go back to my cerulean blue just a little bit. And in addition to that, guess what I'll do? I'll pick up a little bit of my hooker green deep and I'll add just a little bit of that to the blue. The reason for it is I'm going to have some green in the landscape down here. So I want to have a little bit of that green as well in the sky just to balance that color. Again, I'm going to stop, pick up a little bit of the spray, pick up the spray bottle, put a little water at the edge of part of the cloud and soften just a little bit of it. So I want to keep this very interesting up here. So go back, pick up a little bit more of the blue, and we'll add just a little bit more blue in here. And again, I want to keep this a very simple sky, but I also want to keep it very entertaining and very interesting. So what I'll do is I'll just let that dry, and then I'll come back and I'll do another little uh, addition to color in that sky just to add more interest for the sky. Watch what I do now. I'm going to take my same brush, and I'm going to dilute some of the color I have in my palette. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put 
a shadow in the cloud. I think it's important to note that clouds are not flat. They're not just a white flat surface. They have a lot of depth to them. So we want to show a area where we have some shadow going on in the cloud. Now, the shadow area should be much lighter than the sky itself. Otherwise, you wouldn't denote what was shadow and what was cloud or what was sky. And you'll notice here is the sky, but here is the shadow. Notice the difference in the, in the uh, tonal values there. Continuing on, we'll do the same thing with the other part of the cloud. Taking our time with it now, don't rush. So I'm just scrubbing it in. Watch the brush strokes and how I do that. There's no vertical or horizontal brush strokes. It's just kind of scrubbing in some color, much the same way an oil painter would scrub in color. So all I'm doing is just putting in some color to create a shadow look to the cloud. Okay. Now there's two things I'm going to do when this dries a little bit. I'm going to come in and I'm going to add a darker value in the sky and I'll show you what I'm doing there. I'm going to come down to not quite the edge of the cloud but just above it and it'll create a sort of a wispy look to the clouds. You'll see what I mean when I do it. Then in addition to that we'll also put a little bit darker shadow in a couple of areas on the clouds again for a variety. Now what I need to do at this point is I need to take a moment and dry this then come back and then we'll go ahead and start on the, on the actual uh, uh, falls itself. So let me just take a moment and dry this now.